This is a lecture outline two about atomic structure, and I've got my periodic table here. I've got uh, three colors of pens, uh, black, green, and red, and I've got my calculator, and we will need all of those during uh, lecture outline two. Now, uh, so lecture outline two, Roman numeral one, atomic structure. Uh, protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. Electrons are around the nucleus. And uh, my symbol for proton is lowercase letter p. My symbol for neutron is lowercase letter n. And my symbol for electron is lowercase e with a subscript minus. Okay. And uh, now what I'd like to do for you is just draw a sketch of the uh, of an atom, and we'll draw a sketch of a hydrogen atom. And a hydrogen atom uh, on our periodic table, hydrogen is element number one, and it will turn out that the number above the H, or the number above the chemical symbol H for hydrogen, is the number of protons. And uh, as we will see, the number below H is the average uh, molar mass for one mole of hydrogen. But let's talk about the numbers above now. So hydrogen has one proton. Uh, let's see, so over here. I'll draw hydrogen's box on the periodic table and the number above is the number of protons, or the number of p, because p is our symbol for protons, abbreviation. Okay, so there's one proton, and for an atom, an atom will be neutrally charged, or have no charge. Each proton has a positive charge, The electron, and that's why there's a minus here, each electron has negative charge. And so atoms will have uh, equal number of protons and electrons to have no charge. Okay, so now back to our picture. So if this is the atom, and atoms are going to be spherical, and when we draw them in two dimensions, they'll be circular. Let's suppose this was an atom. The nucleus is one one hundred thousandth the radius of the atom. And so if we, and it's in the center. And so if we were to draw the tiniest little dot here that was the nucleus, we will still wouldn't be able to see it. It'd just be so tiny. So I'm actually going to draw a dot in the center. And, but that is probably. 1,000 times bigger than it should be if this is the radius of an atom. So the nucleus is a very, very small portion of the center of the atom. So nucleus, very small, uh, like th if we think of the volume or the space of an atom, the nucleus is a very small part of the volume of the atom. is a very small part of the volume of the atom. In fact, it's one one hundred thousandth the volume. Tiny. Okay, and so, uh, but inside the nucleus is where you find the protons and the neutrons. And that's what it says, protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, and electrons are around the nucleus. So for a hydrogen atom, there's one proton. For a typical hydrogen atom, there are no neutrons. Uh, but right next to the nucleus, I'm going to put a plus one because that's where the proton is. And then outside the nucleus, going around the nucleus in orbits, or something we will eventually learn to call orbitals because they're not always spherical or circularly shaped. 
will be the electron. So there's the electron, and the electron is zipping around very fast around the nucleus. And so uh, a couple things to point out. Uh, it'll turn out that the proton, or and the nucleus more generally, has approximately 99.97% of the mass of an atom. So these squiggly equal signs means approximately. So nucleus has approximately 99.97% of the mass of the atom. And yet it's only a tiny fraction of the space. So the vast majority of the space of an atom is defined by the movement of the electrons. So the size of the atom, let's get this out. is defined by the electron circling the nucleus. Is defined by the electron circling the nucleus. And I'm gonna put circling in quotes here because it's not always a circle or a sphere, as we'll see, sometimes it is though. So that's our picture of an atom, very tiny, but has most of the mass, very tiny uh, nucleus, electrons going around it and defining the size of the atom. Now, uh, the way that we know this, at least one of the ways in which we know this, is by what's called the Rutherford Gold Foil Experiment. And what Rutherford did was Rutherford took what are called alpha rays, and alpha rays are particles with two protons and two neutrons, and uh, they're, they're very small particles, and he shot them through a very thin gold foil, which was essentially one atom thick, uh, and what he's found was that the vast majority of the alpha rays or alpha particles, alpha particle is a better way, and that's how I will refer to them uh, and how most chemists uh, refer to them. Alpha part it's like a ray though of alpha particles, so, or a beam. Anyway, so most of them went straight through, and the fact that most of them went straight through signified that the atom is mostly empty space. So atom is mostly empty space. And then every once in a while, the uh, alpha particle would interact with the nucleus or one of the nucleuses in the gold foil and be deflected and that was pretty cool but then every once in a while even further one of them would be reflected and that was our signal that the nucleus must be massive meaning has most of the mass of an atom so this reflected beam result means that most of the mass of the atom has to be in the nucleus. Most of the mass of the atom in nucleus. And uh, we don't have to know, or you don't have to know, what the Rutherford Gold Foil experiment was or who did it, but you should know that this, um, this experiment is how we got our picture of the atom, including the atom is mostly empty space and most of the, atom, most of the mass of the atoms in the nucleus. Now, uh, here's a table with some numbers as far as for protons, neutrons, and electrons, their relative mass, and from this, Protons and neutrons are effectively the same mass. However, the difference between a proton and a neutron is the charge. A proton has a plus one and a neutron is neutral, no charge. And there's actually, this is, C stands for Coulombs. This is more of a physics-y definition. 
of how many coulombs is on one proton and one electron, both positive and negative. And in future courses, uh, you will need this. However, we don't need it right now. We just need to know plus one, minus one, and neutral. And as far as masses go, the only mass that we use in this course is going to be the mass of the proton. And this is given on the conversion and equation sheet. And the conversion and equation sheet, so I keep mine handy so that when I do homework problems, I can look at them. And if I look at this right there, the electron mass, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. That is a number that comes up later in this course. Okay. All right. And I guess the one other thing that's helpful to know is that each electron has a mass that is approximately one two thousandth of either a proton or an electron. So this reinforces the idea that electrons have very little mass compared to protons and neutrons, and that most of the mass is in the protons and neutrons in the nucleus, most of the mass of an atom. Now let's talk about isotopes. Isotopes are um, atoms of the same element. with different numbers of neutrons. With different numbers of neutrons. And uh, as an example on this page, I'd like to give you the nuclear symbols. For three isotopes of carbon. And those three isotopes, well, uh, let me tell you what a, well, let me just draw them. So each of these is a nuclear symbol and uh, nuclear symbols are going to have the, uh, what's called the atomic number. And the atomic number is also is the same as another way of saying the number of protons. <clears throat> and it's called the atomic number because it really tells you what kind of atom it is, the number of protons. And all carbon atoms in the universe are defined as having six protons. So six protons will be the same for all of the different isotopes of carbon to be carbon you must have six protons. Now the number at the top is called the mass number. And the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And here I'm gonna use P and N to symbolize protons and neutrons. So mass number equals number of protons plus number of neutrons. And let's see, uh, oh, sometimes, and we will do this once or twice, we'll refer to as the, the atomic number and the number of protons by the letter Z. And the mass number is sometimes referred to by the letter A, although we won't even do that in this class. So a nuclear symbol has and oh, the last part of this is what's called the chemical symbol. And the chemical symbol is what appears for each chemical on the periodic table. C is for carbon, O is for oxygen, and Na is for sodium. Okay, so now let's take a look at these and we'll categorize for each of these, the number of protons. And again, for carbon, it's always six. 
we'll do the uh, number of neutrons. And for number of neutrons, we can say, well, 12 is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Subtract off six for the number of protons and you get left with the number of neutrons, six in this case. And seven and eight. And so that's, that's the difference um, is the number of neutrons. And if we said now one more, number of electrons in the atom, we said on the previous slide that for atoms, number of electrons equals number of protons. So these are just six as well here. And there are some questions on the homework that ask, ask you to break down different isotopes according to these sets of uh, rules. All right, now I will mention this. So it turns out that carbon 12 and carbon 13 are what are called stable isotopes. So I'm just gonna write stable isotope. Stable, not staple, stable isotope. And that carbon 14 is radioactive. In fact, carbon 14 is fascinating because carbon 14 is the radioactive isotope of carbon that allows uh, items to be carbon dated, meaning you look at the amount of radioactive carbon 14 to tell how long ago something lived. Happy to talk about that in uh, office hours. However, that is a level of chemistry that is beyond this course. Uh, all right, stable isotope. And it will turn out that uh, of the carbon in the known universe, 98% is carbon 12 and 2% here, and these are approximate, so they're gonna get squiggly equal signs. It's approximately 98% is carbon 12, approximately 2% is carbon 13, and this is related to the fact that the number on the periodic table under carbon, in carbon's a little box, is 12.01, and it turns out that carbon 12 has a mass of 12, carbon 13 has a mass of approximately 13, because there's 98%, the 12.01 is going to be very close to the number 12. And we'll talk more about this in the future. Um, the one other thing I wanna say about these before we leave this page, carbon 12 is the pronunciation. So if you wanted to refer to the isotope carbon 12, you would call it carbon 12. This is carbon 13. and carbon 14. And there is no real amount of carbon 14 because it's radioactive and it's constantly radioactively decaying away. And there's more behind that as well. But we won't talk about it now because again, not on the exam, not part of the chemistry that you have to know for this class. One more page at, uh, in this portion of lecture outline atoms versus ions. So we've already talked about atoms. Atoms have protons equals electrons because they have no charge. Atoms have number of protons equals numbers of electrons because they have no charge. Uh, ions, on the other hand, will have charges. And so in general, ions have that the protons and the electrons are not equal. And so let's do a couple of examples. Example one is gonna be for a sodium. Uh, atom and, well, I'm gonna draw the nuclear symbol here. So sodium, let me get a page under that. Sodium 23 is the isotope that I'm going to be talking about here. And if we look at in the periodic table, Every sodium atom in the known universe, and uh, would be defined as even unknown universes, but uh, 11 protons. And then we can imagine that this is a sodium atom, that a sodium atom will 
tends to become charged and become a plus one and plus one electron. And what I want to talk about is number of protons, number of neutrons, number of electrons in each of these species. Number of protons will be the same because 11 is always the number of protons for sodium. Number of neutrons, well, this is neutrons plus protons. Subtract off the protons and you get 12 neutrons. And again, this is the same. So what this is telling us is nothing is changing about the nucleus in this process that I'm talking about. Now, number of electrons equals protons here. So that's gonna be 11. And then it's plus one. If you're plus one charge, that means you have to have one less electron. So there are only 10. And then what we can think of is, well, one electron, true, doesn't even make sense for it to have a proton or a neutron. But it is one electron, so we can fill those numbers in there. And what you can see is this process describes a sodium atom of sodium 23, losing an electron, and that electron becomes a we can think of it as a product. And so we have now determined how many electrons are in the sodium plus ion. On the other hand, we can do a similar thing for fluorine 19. Fluorine element number nine on the periodic table. And we will add one electron. And we will get a negative ion. And if we do the same thing, number of protons, number of neutrons, number of electrons, all fluorines have nine protons. The, this isotope of fluorine has 10 neutrons. And for the fluorine atom with no charge, there's going to be nine electrons. For the fluoride ion, as we will come to know it, there's one additional electron, and so, and in fact, if we keep track of things in this way, we'll be able to identify how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in each chemical species. And you can see here that uh, the number of protons and the number of electrons are not the same for ions.